Hello everyone. I'm going to do a quick video on park neutral switches and gear indicator or gear position indicators. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion as to which one is which or what does what. So I thought I'll just do a quick video to explain to you guys exactly how it is. I'm going to cover the 1UZ non-VVTI from a 95 to 97, 92 be about the same. Um, I've got a 1UZ VVTI here as well. And I've got a 3UZ because there are some sort of slight differences between them. Um, but first thing I want to start by saying is there's park neutral switch and there's gear position indicator. Now they are two completely different things. So you can't say if I bridge the neutral park switch, my ECU is going to think I'm in park. That, that's not just, just not the case at all. Um, you have a completely separate circuit for position or gear indicator and you have a completely separate circuit for the park neutral switch. And just to give you an example, I've got a, a gear selector plug. This is commonly found on like LS400, uh, non-VVTIs and VVTIs, okay? So this is a 10 pin plug and you've got these two big ones in the middle here. That's your park neutral switch. So when you bridge those, your EC doesn't know if you're in park or not. You're only literally bridging the park neutral switch. And over here, we've got one that's commonly found on the 3UZ. Also some uh, sort of 2JZs from IS300s, GS300s, etc. Now they still carry on the same principle. They've only got nine pins in this one, but you've got two big ones here, and that's your park neutral switch. So again, bridging these two together doesn't give your ECU any information. It literally just bridges the park neutral switch. Okay, so let's go over to the diagrams, and I'm gonna try and show you. So the first one I've got here, again from a 1UZ non-VVTI, and this is your park neutral switch okay so just for reference that's your ignition switch so that's your key so what happens is you flick down to start that's st2 it comes along here your 12 volts goes to a fuse called seven and a half amp starter fuse and that's because there's signals going to the ecu not to tell you what gear it's in but to tell you what's happening so it comes down here it goes to this junction it goes off to the ECU, and that's NSW, or neutral start switch, on a non-VVTI, all right? Then it comes down here, and it goes to pin six of this plug. And if I can zoom in here, you'll see there, that's pin six, okay? So it comes in here, all right? Then it comes out of pin number five, which as you can see is the one next to it, okay? And then it splits at this junction. It goes off to your ECU to STA, okay? And it comes up here, goes along here, and that's your starter relay. So it provides the 12 volts for the coil of the starter relay. And if you come down here, you'll see that depending on if you've got an like a immobilizer built into the car, it goes through the body ECU and it provides a ground as long as this ECU tells it. If you don't have that, you'll see there it just goes straight to ground okay so the way the circuit works is you crank the key it comes down irrespective of whether you're in park or neutral it will send 12 volts to nsw if you are in park or neutral then it will complete the circuit go down send a signal to sta come up here trigger the relay and then that relay triggers your starter motor all right so hopefully that's nice and simple so the major thing with this is NSW will get 12 volts irrespective of what position you're in. You could be in drive, reverse, whatever. NSW will get 12 volts because it's prior to the neutral start switch, okay? And then if it is in park or neutral, that's connected, and then it will throw out the signal to STA so the ECU knows that you're trying to crank and, or know that it is actually cranking, and obviously your relay will close and your starter motor will engage, okay? So that is your neutral park position switch right? This is your gear position indicator, okay? So it's exactly the same plug, but basically what you've got in the top here is power. So that's pin four, all right? So coming and looking down here, you'll see fours at the front here, okay? So power comes in at four, and then depending on what gear you're in, so if you're in park, it comes down to here and goes to your combination meter and lights up your park light. Now, do you notice something? That's not going to the ECU. The ECU doesn't know it's in park, right? You put it in reverse. Again, that comes down there, goes to your K 
gauge cluster, your reverse light pops up. But now that one also goes along here, and this is your actual engine ECU. So it knows when it's in reverse, okay? When you've got a neutral, it goes straight down, straight to your combination meter, neutral light pops up. When you're in drive, now this is obviously a 9527 model, so they had the option of a park reverse neutral drive, sideways to three, then two and L. So when you go into drive, it comes down here, and it goes into your tr transmission control switch. This is actually on your um, physical lever that goes backwards and forwards. And then what happens is it comes down and it either gives a light to drive or if you flick it sideways to three, then it'll come across. It'll go here, give a light up the three on the dashboard, but then it'll also come along here and tell the ECU that it is in three. Okay. And then when you put it into second, again, comes down here, goes down here, lights up your dash, goes along there, comes to your ECU, and tells you that it's in two. And the same thing for low or L, okay? Again, down to your combination meter to light up your dash, and then down here and to L. Okay, so surprisingly, there's no way to tell the ECU if the vehicle is in park or neutral. The only thing that it needs, the only thing that the ECU actually ever knows is whether it's in reverse, three, two, or L. That's it. So as I've said, bridging the park neutral switch has absolutely nothing to do with the ECU. The ECU itself doesn't know whether it's in park or neutral or drive or whatever. This, the rest of the wires in here, all the small ones around here, that's what tells your ECU what gear it's in. Okay, and on the non-VBTI, it doesn't even have park or neutral. So you, you, you couldn't possibly tell the ECU you're in park or neutral because it doesn't exist. There's no wire to go to the ECU to tell it like that. Okay, so that's a non-VVTI. Now we'll move on to the VVTI. So this one is slightly different. So similar, but different. So again, ignition switch, your key comes along here goes to a 7.5 amp starter fuse, which is exactly the same as the other one. But now it comes down and it goes into your park neutral switch. Again, six and again, five. It's the exact same plug, so going from there. Then it comes straight out of there, goes into a junction, comes out the junction. Now that goes off to your ECU to STA, so to give it 12 volts to tell it it's cranking, all right? And then boom, along here, and funnily enough, provides the 12 volts for your starter relay. And your starter relay is just grounded. Okay? So, very, very simple. Key, 12 volts, through the fuse, through the park neutral switch, up, splits off, goes to STA of the ECU, and goes to 12 volts of your starter relay. Okay? So, it's the same process. Bridge these two pins, and you're bypassing this park neutral switch, which means your key goes directly to your starter motor and to STA of the ECU. So obviously, if you've watched our previous ones about fuel pump, that's why it needs an STA signal. It activates a fuel pump. It locks the timing at 10 degrees to help the thing start up and so on and so forth. That's the only reason it needs to know that. So again, bridging those wires does not do anything to the ECU other than to make the starter relay work. That's it. Okay. So now we're going to come down here. Now for this gear position indicator, in this instance, we do have all of the gears. So we've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, four, three, two, and L. So remember on an LS4, uh, LS400 VBTI, you've got park. It goes park, reverse, neutral, drive, four, sideways, three, two, sideways to L, okay? So that, again, gets taken care of this con transmission control switch, all right? So very, very simple, exactly the same. Pin number four, 12 volts coming in, and your switch moves depending on where you are. So you've got green and white, which comes along, and that goes to park. It goes to the ABS and track ECU, but that's not relevant for this conversation. But anyway, that's your park. Then you come down here, and it goes to reverse. You come down here, and it goes to neutral. So again, this is all telling the ECU, because this information was transmitted via MPX. So here it goes, here it goes, there it is into your cluster, and there's your lights, park, reverse, neutral, drive, four, three, two, and L. So, no physical connection to the actual cluster to tell it what gear it's in, MPX. All of the information's there. 
And then here we're going to start on the drive. So you see a drive comes down here. It goes into here, splits off, goes to the ECU to tell it's in drive. And then it supplies 12 volts to your transmission control switch. And your tr transmission console control switch uses this 12 volts to loop back to four if you put it in four and it goes straight from there to tell the ECU you're in fourth gear. And then coming down here, you've basically got this one coming down here and that goes to three. So that's your next one down. And then last, you're coming down here and you're going off and it's junctioning off and it's going into two and that's going into your switch and that's providing the 12 volts when you put it into L, then it comes up there. So the reason they use these 12 volts coming into this computer, the reason they have drive and two coming in there is basically so that if for whatever reason um, something failed and you see you can't have drive and three having 12 volts at the same time. So when you have, when you're actually in fourth, it's actually drive and fourth that are having 12 volts at the same time. Vice versa. When you put it into L, actually two and L are having 12 volts at the same time. But you can't have two and drive having 12 volts at the same time. Otherwise, it's going to freak out and go, well, I can't possibly be in drive and two at the same time. But it knows that D and four can be on at the same time, and it knows that two and L can be on at the same time. Okay? So, on the 1UZ VBTI, all of this information goes to the ECU, and it's just a simple case of not having to run wires all the way through the vehicle. From the selector switch to the ECU via MPX to the dash. Done. Remember, MPX is early CAN, so just saving on wires, basically. Okay, so as you can see on here, when you look at the actual position switch, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, which is exactly the same as you got here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this one's park, reverse, neutral, drive, three, two, and L. So that's your physical positions. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, and L. Three is electronic. And on here, you've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, three and two. So when you're actually pulling your gear lever back and forwards, those are the ones that you are going through and that's what's being transmitted to the dash. So again, you can clearly see bridging the park neutral switch, these two wires, doesn't tell the ECU it's in park. All it does is it completes the circuit to activate the starter relay. If you want to tell the ECU that it's in park electronically properly, you would basically take pin four and you would take pin seven of this plug and you bridge them together. Now you, the ECU actually has park having 12 volts. So now the ECU will think it's in park because you've actually told it so by bridging those two separate wires. All right, so so far it's really simple. They just use the 12 volts and they do that through the park neutral switch. So now we're gonna move on to the 3UZ because then they decided to change it all up. Okay, so when you're looking at the 3UZ now, it's slightly different. Okay, so basically, what they've got down here now is you've got your key as usual. It's coming down here, it's splitting off, it's providing the power for the actual starter motor, but it's also providing the 12 volts for the relay. Now, what they're doing is if you come down here, there's your neutral start switch. All right. But this time what they're doing is pin number six, which if we have a look here, that's number six. So that one goes to ground, comes through the park neutral switch and provides the ground for the relay. So if you're not in park or neutral, there will be no ground for the relay. Therefore the relay will not open up. Therefore your starter will not engage. Okay, so now you can see where they've made a difference. Now, instead of Instead of running the 12 volts through the park neutral switch and supplying the starter relay and then just grounding out the relay permanently, now what they've done is they've taken the power from there. They've used that power to provide both the starter motor itself and the 12 volts on the coil side of the um, relay. But now what they're doing is they're going and saying, right, all we'll do is we'll take the ground through the park neutral switch and go there. If you're in a park or neutral, no ground, no clicking relay, no starter motor activation. Okay. So that's, that's the big difference between the 3UZ and, and, and the two 1UZs you've seen there. So it's just a different way of doing it. And what all they do now is, as it's coming out of here, all right, as it's on its way to the starter motor, it branches off, comes along here, funnily enough, goes through a seven and a half amp fuse called STA, and it comes down here, and it goes to STA on your ECU, 
okay? So, other thing you're gonna notice as well is that theoretically, if you just bridge the starter relay, that starter motor's gonna engage. There's nothing stopping it, all right? So if you've got a problem where your car's not cranking, it's more than likely either a problem with this or a problem with your starter relay because there's absolutely nothing stopping me from pulling out my starter relay and just bridging those two terminals and the whole car will crank. There's nothing stopping, literally if you had no engine, no engine harness, anything in there, you could literally just find these two wires here where they go into junctions there and there, bridge them together and you'll get 12 volts to your starter motor. All right, so if your starter motor's not cranking, look here. Nothing to do with your ECU. You don't even need to have your ECU in the car. You could crank, you could crank your motor without ECU in the car. ECU's got nothing to do with it in these particular cases. So again, problems with your starter? Here you go. Start by looking here, okay? Don't assume it's your ECU that's the problem. And again, they follow pretty much the exact same principle as the one you said BBTI. So again, you've got park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, and L. It goes off to a shift control ECU, which is basically built into your shifter. There's your drive coming in, and you've got drive, two, four, and L. And over here, you've got park, reverse, neutral, and three. All right. So again, same scenario. Literally, there's your power coming in. There's that. Okay. So hopefully that clears it up now. All right. So remember... Bridging those two wires to make the car start does not make the ECU think it's in park. There's a separate way of doing that. All right. Starter circuit with the park neutral switch, gear indicator, and that's what tells either the, in this case, the gauge cluster and the ECU sum wires, in this case, all the ECU, and in this case, again, all the ECU. All right. So hopefully now that clears it up for you guys. So there is a big difference between bridging the neutral park switch to make the vehicle start and making the ECU think it's in park or reverse or drive or two or whatever you want, basically. Okay. So again, um, just a quick video as we've been asked this um, quite a few times. And I've seen a lot of posts on the internet, guys, going, oh, you've got to bridge the park neutral switch to make the ECU think it's in park so the vehicle will start. That's not the case. And the same applies for JZ, so your 2JZ, your 1JZ, exactly. They all have very similar circuits. As you can see from here, I have taken an example of three different 3UZs, and although they do the 3UZ in slightly a different way, it's, it's still exactly the same circuit. So it's literally just a case of that's completely separate. All right? So there's your starter circuit. There's your gear position indicator. Completely separate circuits. So hopefully that clears everything up. And as usual, if there's any, if you've got any questions about this, um, do feel free to just leave us a comment. Um, you can find us on our Facebook page. You can send us a message there. Um, and that's about it. So hopefully this has been helpful. And we'll speak to you guys again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.